Here we go. We're going to get started. So thank you so much for being here today and uh, coming to hear me talk about what I I know some about, but I'm no expert by any means. I've just struggled and fallen and learned a lot in the last three years of my life with being involved in fitness and nutrition and just a healthy lifestyle. And what I hope to instill upon you is, is if there's one or two little things you can pick up that help you in your journey to wherever you're trying to get, that's just the whole point. Learn from my mistakes and learn from what I've learned because a huge part of my life lately has been dedicated to personal development of mindset and being better and learning how to do things better, more efficient, from everything from time management to fitness to nutrition to everything. We're going to get right into this. To start off, who am I? So my name is Ryan Berry and I am formerly clinically obese, sleep apnea, uh, severe lack of self-confidence. Uh, I was 80 pounds overweight back in 2012 and it was a combination of I was working out and rewarding my workouts with poutine with burgers and fries and cake and ice cream. Uh, basically all carbs, no healthy lean proteins, no vegetables, and uh, it was pretty bad. To give you, for instance, 90 days, P90X, like one of the craziest, hardest home fitness programs ever created. I did 90 days. I lost three pounds of fat and gained three pounds of muscle in 90 days. And for most people, that'd be enough almost to bang your head against the wall, because like, why bother, right? Like that's, and it's all because what I was eating wasn't in line with what my goals were and what I was doing nutrition-wise. So the next year, 2013, is when I really got into that, P90X, trying to do stuff really hard, working out hard, trying really hard, but eating terrible. That's when I lost those three pounds and gained the three pounds of muscle. So didn't lose any weight, but didn't really have a healthy transition from muscle to fat either. So in 2014, I started getting a little bit better with my eating, started losing a little bit of results, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to sign up to be a coach, not because I'm in a place right now where I can help anyone because I'm not there yet, but realistically I was getting a product discount. So I signed up to be a coach to save money off products I was using to help me get in shape. But what quickly clicked for me was that I found a group of people that were in the same boat I was in and they were willing to come along with me to help each other live a healthier lifestyle, lose weight, get in better shape. And so what I found was accountability, support, community, and I found a passion for helping people learn from what I've done and to try and help them get to where I was at quicker than it took me to get there. So once I really clicked into that mindset, tuned into that community and support and, and that passion, I lost 12 pounds in my first three weeks because everything I was doing in my entire life fed into what my goal was of weight loss, of losing this. And then my family started to get a little healthier. My parents started losing a little bit of weight. My brother got into it. My wife got a lot healthier. And then it's kind of snowballed from there where random strangers were approaching me and being like, hey, I like what you're doing with that program. Do you think you could help me do it? And that's really in 2014 when I said, okay, this is, I found my calling in life. I love doing this. I want to keep helping people. And it helps me be that much better because I'm always accountable now to help those people. So fast forward, 2015, 2016, where I'm at now, self-awareness through the roof. I have a very good understanding of who I am, what I'm doing, and how it's affecting me. It's something that I've never had in my life. It's, I call it like the mental fog has been lifted and I, I know what I'm doing and how it's impacting me, not just you know assuming like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have a poutine and it's gonna make me gain weight. No, it's, it's beyond that to the point where I know my daily actions, my mental minds, and everything contributes to my well-being now. Confidence. You would not find me standing up here in 2012. That just goes to show you my confidence level is skyrocketed through the roof. My continuous self-improvement is, is unbelievable. And this all stemmed from fitness, but it turned from a fitness journey to a mental journey. And that's when the magic, when the click happens, and that's when it becomes something you do for a lifetime, not just short-term, quick gains. So I'm still working full-time on my own in a job I like. But I coach with full-time effort because it's been a driving force in my life. And when I get a client who says, you know, thank you, because of you I lost 50 pounds and I can finally keep up my kids in the backyard playing around with them, that's, that's like my oxygen to me and that's what keeps me going and fuels me because that sustains me in more ways than and anything else could. Uh, before I get into the meat and potatoes of what I'm going to talk about, which is kind of your why and how to start, stick to, and maintain a fitness and nutrition program, um, I just want to touch real quickly on, on stuff you need to avoid, and there's a lot of this stuff out there in the industry right now. I call them Google trainers. 
And that could be you Google training how to do something yourself or relying on someone's expertise who is just Googling facts and resharing them on Facebook. By the way, 99% of all statistics on Facebook in a meme or a post are false, and I made that 99% up, but that just goes to show you that there, you, you need to do your own research on that stuff, right? Don't believe anything you see online. Go find out for sure from yourself. And it took me a long time to realize that as well. Um, but what you'll find if you Google how to succeed in fitness, how to get results, you're gonna find stuff like, you know, make a plan, write a goal, share it with others, plan your meals, do this, eat that, don't do this. There's an endless list of tips that you can get for free online. And yeah, there's relevance to all of them. Everything can have an impact on your journey. And different people like writing a goal down and looking at it every day, that's gonna help some people, it's not gonna help some people. But there's, there's another element that goes deeper than that that will be the fundamental decision on if you succeed or fail in your fitness and nutrition. So at the base level, what it does take is you need simple and effective workouts. You don't need to go to the gym for two hours a day, but you need to be active more than once or twice a week here and there when you feel like it. So you need a simple plan that's laid out, easy to follow, and it's something you can do. You need a simple and effective meal plan. Again, you don't want to starve yourself because then your body goes into starve mode, it absorbs everything. You need to eat, and you need to eat for your goals, and I already talked about how I struggled with that for years. So you need to get that in place, and that, that's kind of the bare essentials of what you need to get in place. It needs to be something you enjoy. Because if you hate running, don't start a running program. And I hate running. And I had to run for six months in a training that I did for my job. And I, it was like torture. I did it because I had to. And I've never run a day since because I'm not a runner. Except in the last month, I realized it's my weakest link. And now I'm at a stage where I know to work on what I'm worst at to get the best improvement. So you will get there eventually to do the stuff you don't like. Just don't start with it. And you need a support and reward system. So you need someone alongside you to help you. You need someone or a community or someone you're doing it with. Someone to help you, support you, encourage you, talk to about it, bounce ideas off of. You need that support system. 99%, and again, I'm making up statistics here. But most people can't stick to something when they're starting fresh, out of the gate, never done it before by themselves. It's just not how this works. It takes a lot of effort. Um, and a reward system. And I'm not talking like, yay, I lost 10 pounds. I'm going to go to Dairy Queen. I'm talking like, Set up something that's meaningful and important to you, like, you know what, okay, great, I, I reached a goal that I had for 10 pounds, and now I'm going to go buy myself a new pair of yoga workout pants, because that is something that everyone likes to wear. Well, I don't wear yoga pants, but mm -hmm. most people love yoga pants, and what happens when you buy them, it's like, man, these things are great, look at these cool designs, and you're like, I'm going to go do yoga in them, right? So it helps fuel your process to keep going, because it's, it's, it's relevant to the fitness world, but it's not like, hey, I'm going to reward myself with a salad, it's... It's something a little bit more fun if you think it. Um, so now the meat and potatoes. The number one thing for succeeding in health and fitness is a fundamental mind shift. And this is the hardest part. There's a lot of, you'll see the quotes out there. The, the, the brain is the hardest muscle to train. It's so true. You need to get your head around what you're doing and how you're doing it, but more importantly, why you're doing it. So I have kind of two steps that I've developed. The first is redefining success and failure. So most people would define their starting point as, I'm here, I'm starting, I'm going to do stuff that's going to work towards something, and you can take this to any aspect of your life, it doesn't help to be fitness, nutrition, but relationships or your job or whatever, and you work towards bettering yourself and bettering what you're doing. Okay, so related to fitness, okay, great, I've been doing it a few weeks, I lost a few pounds, great, success is that well, I'm moving towards success, and all of a sudden you have a wedding, and you have cake. Whatever happens, life gets in the way, and you've set back everything you've done. You've gained all that weight back. Most people would see that as, a, oh, well, I guess I can't do it. It's time to give up, time to go home, have a nice day. I'm never, never going to be skinny. I'm never going to be healthy. But success, working towards failure, is not a linear, and it's not a pendulum. You don't swing to success and then back to failure. It's not two extremes. It's not two outcomes. Failure is what leads to success start to look at it that way, you can start to sustain your efforts, you can start to sustain your, your motivation. Uh, failure is a, is a required part of the process, it's a stepping stone to get to success. So instead of thinking it of, you know, I'm starting and I'm moving towards success and I'm going to fall back, you, you just, it's, it's not linear. You, you start, you make progress, even with a failure. Failure is a progress. 
you've probably seen these signs, you know, success or failure is this way or that way. No, they're both in the same direction. And when you learn to not let a failure stop you, that's when you can keep going on to. Now, flip side, this was me for a long time. Success is not the end result. So let's say you define success with 10 pounds of weight loss. You lose 10 pounds, you need to not look at that as the end game. Because when you do, you lose 10 pounds, you put your feet up, you start having more chips, you start having more pizza, you start going to the movies more and having more popcorn, and you go back to where you were. So by looking at your goal as ultimate success, it's very, that's how we get into these yo-yos. You lose 10 pounds, you gain 10 pounds. You lose 10 pounds, you gain 10 pounds. And on and on and on. So you're always looking for the next quick fix to lose those 10 pounds because you did it before, but you want to do it quicker, better. But every time you reach that goal, you're stopping. So it's not sustainable. So you, you can't see success as the end game. You're always working towards it. It has to be something that is never going to be fully achieved so that you're always working to be better. So here's, here's the, the kind of the icing on the cake of sustaining it. If I were to ask you guys why you wanted to start a fitness and nutrition program, why you wanted to most commonly, the answer is, I want to do it because I want to lose weight. I want to do it because I want to feel good. I want to do it because I want to look good in my bathing suit this summer at the beach. I want to fit in my jeans from high school. This is a legitimate, very common answer I get when I first ask people why they're doing it. I want to make my ex feel bad. I want to show him or her up by showing him how hot I got after he left me. I'll show him. That's a very common, you know what, whatever fuels your fire. Uh, I want to have a smaller waist. I want to look like celebrity XYZ. This is probably my least favorite answer for why, because every single person is unique and individual, and if you're doing everything in your power to look like someone else, you're, you're a clone, you're a copy, and you're not the original, you're not yourself. So that is, you know, just stop pretending the Kardashians are hot. That's my answer to that one. But these aren't whys. These are not why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, yeah, it is. I want to lose weight. No, no. These are what's. What you're doing is losing weight. What you're doing is wanting to look good in the bathing suit. Those, those are the what's. And that's a huge target. And that's why when people start a fitness program, I think this is like 70, 80 percent, that's an actual statistic. I'm making that one up. Of people who start a nutrition and fitness program don't get to the end. Whether it's a three week, 60 day, 30 day, six month, whatever the program is, most people won't make it to the end because they focus on their what's. They focus on what they want, not why they want. And that's the biggest difference that you see in that 30% that succeed or have a strong why. And I'm going to get into that. So, why are you doing it again? Now thinking that. Okay, well, I'm a bad runner, so I'm going to start running because I want to get better at running. So now you're starting to get into less what. You're getting, you're getting into improvement. I want to you know, go to yoga so I'm better flexible and I'm better able to deal with life and more agile. I want to not eat carbs so I can help with weight loss. And while these are all different strategies and tactics, and, and this one, I'm going to take this amazing pill to stop getting fat. Um, that's, just don't do that. You know that doesn't work, so stop trying it. That's a sidebar. It's exercise, nutrition, and balance. That's what it takes. There's no magic bullet out there that will help you. Um, but these are the hows. So you're, you're getting closer to your target. So what you're doing is the broad, you know, I want to look at the beach. How you're doing it, okay, I'm going to start a running program, I'm going to start insanity, I'm going to start doing a fix, I'm going to just eat better, whatever the case is. We're not quite there yet. To hit the bullseye of why you're doing it, we need to go deep. And it's not easy. It's not easy to define your why for most people. For me, it took two years to be able to articulate my why I was doing what I was doing. I knew why I was doing it. I just couldn't formulate it into words because it's, it's not easy. And that's why most people miss it. That's why most people miss the bullseye and don't stick with it because it's, it's not the easiest thing to come up with in the world. So your why is a deep emotional connection to what you're doing. It has meaning to you. It can't necessarily just all matter about someone else or appearances. It has to have a deep meaning to you. And it's got tangibles and intangibles. So stuff you can measure and stuff you really can't even measure. So for an example, this first one, this is a snippet of my why, and I could probably talk for two hours on my why I do this. But for me, when I was 80 pounds overweight and suffering from sleep apnea, my evenings and my nights consisted of my wife 
elbowing me as hard as she could in the chest to wake me up so I'd roll over to start breathing again at night. So I was like, I have a gill, I snore. Talk to the doctor. The doctor says, no. What's happening is you're not breathing for a few seconds. And what can happen is you can stop breathing altogether. So that, that clicked with me. And I thought, holy crap. The last thing I want is for my wife not to wake up when I stop breathing, and then I don't wake up the next morning. And that thought almost brings me to tears. I'm getting, I'm getting tingles right now thinking about this because it's a deep emotional connection to why I focus on nutrition and health to stay healthy. Because the last thing I want is for my wife to be a widow at 32. That's not acceptable to me. And it's not something I want to put onto her. A very, very, very common why that people start to formulate early on when they're in our groups and they're working with us is, I want to be able to set a good example for my kids Show them how to live healthy so they grow up to achieve active, healthy lifestyles. They're not dealing with health issues that I might have dealt with. This is a huge motivator for anyone with kids because the last thing you want is to deal with a kid in high school who has mobility issues or obesity or diabetes or whatever. So setting a good example by leading by example sets that example for your kids, especially when they're younger, that they grow up with knowing that's how things happen so they can avoid a lot of the mistakes that most of us make getting and you know it takes it took me 30 years to get to where I was at I don't have kids yet so if I did in the early <coughs> stages of their life they would have been following some pretty terrible examples so to what end to why why bother putting effort into thinking about your why why do we do this why is it important having a strong why will connect you to success or get you working constantly towards success it will help you reach goals but it'll continuously help you set new ones. So you reach a goal, you set a new one, you work towards that goal. So you're not reaching that success pillar that makes you stop working altogether. You'll get into continuous improvement. You'll stop looking at it as short-term goal shopping. I wanna lose 10 pounds, I find a program, I lose 10 pounds, great, I'm done. You'll stop getting out of that mentality, you'll start getting into, you know, no, my why is more important than the short-term gains or losses or what I'm looking for. And having that strongly defined why is what keeps you going for years. And if you'd ask anyone I grew up with, if I had been working out for three years straight, if you said, you know, in three years from now, three years ago, will Ryan still be doing this program? 99% of the people in the room said no. He'll get his results and he'll quit. He'll quit while he's ahead. That was me, 100%. I've blown so many people's minds who know me <laughs> that I've kept up with this for three years because my why is strong enough to fuel me through that and pass that. The other goal is and this goes back to the support system. Yeah, you need a support system. You need someone to bang ideas off of. You need someone to talk to, to help you through hurdles, to help you pass those failures, to stepping stones to the next one and the next one. But the end goal is if your why is strong enough and you can keep it in mind and always evolve it and evolve your goals, you have no need for me or you, you have less of a need for your support system. And that's kind of counterintuitive to the entire health and fitness industry. Everyone makes money off selling their products or their services and they want you to keep coming back. Trainers, nutritionists, whatever. They want you to keep coming back to keep getting their services and needs so that you can keep making improvements. But if you have a strong enough why you're doing it, you're gonna be able to sustain it your, yourself. You're not gonna need those extra people. You're not gonna need to spend that money on nutritionists, on personal trainers, because your why is strong enough to drive you to it and your why is your motivation. It becomes everything you need to sustain yourself for long-term success and to be in that 30% of people that actually finish a program but then never stop.